Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I would go about carving a fairly simple kind of cylindrical form. So I've just drawn this random arm here. And the point is that I, I want to kind of show how to make these kinds of marks. And there's three different ways that I usually go about it. But when I'm doing a piece like this, or carving an element like this, first thing I do is just go around the outline. And going around the outline helps kind of establish uh, like a really solid border. So if if you start carving the inside before you carve the outside, I, I always find that there's more likelihood that I will carve beyond where I intend to just because there's a lot less pressure. But when when it's all carved away around it, you know for sure that if you carve too far, you're going to be breaking your boundary and making a gap in the line. And so I find that I'm just naturally much more careful if I make it a little bit more, more high stakes, I guess. So I usually go around the edges with the small U-gouge, and then I take the big U-gouge like this and just clear some of that space away. But I use the small one first because you can get much more precision for the outer contour, and that's also important. So now that the outline is all established, I can start thinking about the interior. So usually for a shape like this, the easiest way to do it is to first carve out the white shape on the inside here. And then just simply start from the inside part, the darkest part, and you start shallow and you kind of push forward and down. So as the gouging tool goes deeper into the wood, it gets wider and it makes your mark larger. You can kind of mimic a V-gouge shape with just the U-gouge here. I find that that saves me a lot of time. I don't have to switch tools. And just keep in the rhythm and keep moving. 
And if you find that you're gouging, you're, you're pushing forward and you're going too far and you're kind of making marks in your outline here that you don't want, another way to do it is to just carve like a little trench, just like that. And then you can start in here. You can push as hard as you want. And if you go too far, you have a lot of kind of buffer zone that can catch your tool. So if you're worried that that you're pushing too far and you're you're going too much through it. Get this kind of bumper area. So it's sort of a where if you make a mistake it's, it doesn't really matter. And then afterwards you just carve this out and it stays white like that. So those are those are two ways. Starting from the darkest part, pushing forward, pushing down with the tool, and kind of getting that taper on your line going that way. There are two versions in the same in the same technique. Now sometimes if you're working on a really big wood block, you don't have the it's not so easy to turn the whole thing around because if you're if you want to come at it from from the inside, if you're right handed, you need the the small part, the darker part to be on the right side and you can sort of push in like this. But sometimes you're working on a really big wood block and it's not really so easy to flip it. So if that's the case there's a way you can start on the outside here and you start deeper you kind of just flick you flick kind of up and in and so as the carving tool moves up the part of the U that is cutting gets narrower and gets smaller so you can mimic this tapered line you can do it from this direction so I think the the first way I showed is a little bit easier if you're a beginner and this way requires a little bit more practice it's a lot easier if you're going this way to go too far and to carve too much into your shadow area. But with a little bit of practice, uh, it can become, become easier to do it. And then the probably the most difficult way, but a really effective way that I have found, is over time you can teach yourself how to do it left-handed, and then it becomes just the same. So if you're carving from this way and you're right-handed, you know, you're carving in, you're making those marks like the first time I showed you. And if you have the block and you can't turn it and you have these marks coming from the left side, you teach yourself how to carve lefty. Or if you're left-handed, teach yourself how to carve righty, of course, vice versa. Then you can kind of make the same mark you would make with your right but with your left. And a good way to practice is to use this technique where you have this buffer zone. So if you're worried, you know, you don't have as much... Uh, muscle memory with your left hand and you're worried that you might go too far you can you can use this one and then even if you push too far you're going to hit that that buffer zone there and you're not going to be making wild marks that are skipping across your block and it's fairly simple like that so after this is all carved just go around the inside of your, your line like that. And get rid of this, the big U gouge. And it looks just the same. So those are three easy techniques, three and a half, I guess. <laughs> three and a half easier semi-easy techniques for rendering a kind of cylindrical form, making these kinds of, making this kind of a mark in a woodcut. I should mention that I'm using MDF, and this is just a power grip, small U gouge. This is a random big U gouge that I, I found in uh, a set that somebody left in my studio. So the, the big U gouges, I, I don't do too much with them aside from clearing. Most of, my, uh, most of my work is done with the small U gouge, so I want to make sure that this one is really sharp. This one, I, I, it doesn't matter that much, but this is pretty much all I use. And uh, here I have a, a silicone rubber mat that keeps the block from slipping. And you can also use these kind of uh, kitchen cupboard liners you put them under your wood block and it keeps them from slipping around.
Thanks for watching. I hope that this was useful. And if you have ideas for future videos that you would like to see or techniques you want to know more about, please let me know in the comments below. And please be sure to like and subscribe and share the video with people who you think would be interested.